Yes. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, I'm Vaidhi. Uh, this is Lena. Uh, we are longtime uh, colleagues and have built a good amount of uh, software together. Uh, I've got a confession to make. Uh, we are process geeks. And uh, the impact of that has been felt by our own team uh, quite a few times. Let me give you an example. Uh, we have these daily morning company-wide uh, stand-up meetings. And uh, Lena and I would very excitedly talk about things like uh, continuous delivery and continuous improvement uh, in these uh, meetings. And uh, things were going great until uh, a colleague of ours uh, told us uh, or asked us whether we had noticed that uh, the number of folks in the stand-up was kind of steadily coming down. Uh, it turned out that uh, folks were coming in to work just after the stand-up uh, would get done. And uh, we wondered why. We were talking about all these super interesting topics every day. Then we met uh, a friend of ours uh, recently uh, who told us that uh, process talk sounded to him like uh, a trip to the dentist. And um, I guess that also answers the mystery of the, uh, the reducing stand-up count. What we'll do today instead is to uh, talk about some war stories and throw in some thoughts on uh, continuous delivery and culture along the way. Any brain science, neuroscience geeks over here? Anybody who's interested in that kind of stuff? Uh, well, thank you. <laughs> so uh, time permitting, we'll talk about some of that as well uh, at the end of the presentation. Uh, uh, are you able to hear me OK? OK. Um, so continuous delivery, I think uh, most of you know that it's a large topic. It's a huge topic. Uh, there are many uh, ways to skin this cat. Uh, today in this talk, we are going to talk about uh, majorly three aspects of uh, continuous delivery. Uh, that is uh, build quality in, then make your uh, build always ready to deploy, and continuous improvement. And while uh, we'll also talk about the practices th that are required for, uh, for these aspects, and then connect those into the motivation uh, of, uh, of the team, how, how those practices affect the motivation of the team, imp impact the motivation of the team. We're going to talk about motivation 3.2, uh, which, uh, which is three pieces uh, together, um, uh, autonomy, mastery, and purpose, which are key for a knowledge worker to sustain the motivation for a longer period of time. And that may motivation intact, how does it create a culture within the organization? So before we move forward, uh, we have one more confession to make. Uh, we don't have any PhDs in this subject, but we do have a thesis that we would like to uh, present in front of you. That is, practice continuous delivery, and you will end up with having a great culture. So let's start with the stories. Let's start with the first story. Uh, so this is way back uh, 2010. Um, we run a software consultancy out of uh, Bangalore, and we had a customer uh, approach us to build a, a product in the consumer space uh, specifically a uh, utility product. And uh, we suggested that we kickstart uh, the whole thing with a, a two-day uh, brainstorming session. We had our scrum kit ready, lots of story cards, uh, multicolored stickies, uh, lots of those wonderful Sharpies. And at the end of uh, the two-day session, we had more than 100 cards uh, neatly laid out on the table uh, and also uh, on uh, an online spreadsheet. The next logical step would have, of course, been to start the estimation process. True to Scrum principles, we decided to go with uh, story points. And the idea was that we would go ahead and uh, estimate each and every one of those uh, 100 cards, 100 plus cards, over a span of the next few days. Fast forward another couple of days, and we had our estimates ready. It was going to be a good, nice, long six-month project, uh, at the end of which there would be a beautiful product that we would have built, and that would scale quickly uh, to a million plus users. Fantastic, right? Uh, I guess some of you can already see where this is going. We also uh, ended up uh, uh, injecting a few more uh, milestones uh, in, into the process, three milestones to be exact. And at the end of each of these milestones, we would have uh, a party and then get back quickly to working on the very next milestone. We would also work in um, two-week uh, iterations, uh, since this was uh, a Scrum-based system, and award uh, the team with uh, story points as soon as they'd finished coding a story. We just couldn't wait until they'd also tested it. And then uh, we would finally also have these demos with the customer every month or so. So things were going great until um, after about four months or so, the customer asked us to schedule a demo with um, an investor of his. 
And uh, there was about seven days or so to go for the demo. We asked for just a couple of days to get everything ready. And uh, a day before demo day, we had uh, the entire team camping at the office uh, feverishly fixing bugs. Let's just say that weekend isn't the best one that we've had in the last four years. So most of you might be familiar, familiar with this kind of uh, setup. Uh, we have already spoken about uh, Scrum, but there are two more parts to it. Uh, that is called the water and the fall. Uh, so let's, uh, let me explain the water scrum fall model. That is uh, the hippo, the highest speed person in the room, has a great idea. And he comes to the uh, engineering team uh, to build it. The engineering team has just finished their uh, two-day scrum, scrum course. The only difference being that they take all the instructions standing instead of sitting. And then we have a fall, uh, uh, fall part, that is the ops team, who sits in the corner, uh, in the secluded corner of the office, uh, with a tiger on their uh, computer, ready to pounce on anyone who comes to meet them. <laughs> Okay, so uh, this is all funny, but uh, to be very frank, we had our most stressful days back in 2010 when uh, things went wrong, and uh, we really wanted to fix it. We we, we just want, we wanted to fix it not just because we wanted to regain the uh, credibility, but also wanted to re retain the motivation of the team. So, uh, but the question is, where should we start? So the simplest answer to do in those cases uh, situation is that start with in, in those uh, cases where where you have control more over. So the pro biggest problem that we had was the quality of the product that we were shipping. So and that is that that is what is in our control, and we wanted to fix that first. So let's move on to the next story where right. we fixed that. Fast forward uh, another six months, um, 2011. Uh, another. Uh, customer that we worked with, another product. Things that remain the same were the uh, water and the fall bit. The things that we made some changes to, the stuff was the stuff in the middle. Um, at the end of the uh, six month period, we noticed some significant uh, improvements, especially with respect to the confidence of the team, uh, the number of weekends and late evenings that the team worked on, uh, the quality of the uh, product itself, which was uh, much more uh, stable this time around. We uh, we did not need to track defects in a separate bug list anymore. Uh, so that was kind of good feedback for us. We had uh, a customer who was much easier to work with as well this time around. Um, uh, perhaps because of the fact that we were uh, making updates to the staging server much more often than we used to in the earlier uh, episode. And this allowed the customer to kind of give us feedback at least once a week or so. So things were going pretty good. Uh, in, in comparison to what was happening earlier. And that, so let's come back to the stuff in the middle that we made changes to, because that was the reason why all this had happened in the first place. Um, what we did was we brought in some practices to build quality in. Now, you may have seen those uh, GAN charts where you have uh, analysis, design, uh, testing, uh, development, testing, and so on and so forth. What's funny is that after the testing phase, you don't really have uh, a fixing bugs phase. Um, building quality in, uh, very simply, is to think about quality as you're writing your code. So uh, you don't really think of uh, testing as an, as an afterthought. It's, it's part and parcel, parcel of the process. Great concept, uh, but how do you bring this in on a day-to-day -day basis? So extreme programming uh, brings in a lot of good practices uh, to help us with this, uh, test-driven development being one of those. Uh, I know there's a lot of activity that's happening on Twitter these days uh, the, with respect to the uh, comments which uh, DHH uh, made the other day, but I think he was talking more about test-driven design than the stuff that we're going to talk about. Test-driven development does give you uh, a suite of regression tests, which gives the team an enormous amount of confidence to go ahead and make even big changes to uh, a, a constantly growing uh, code base. And this is invaluable. Uh, there is really no uh, two ways about that. The confidence, in turn, ends in uh, creating much higher quality software as well. Add to this practices such as um, um, exploratory, uh, testing. exploratory testing or continuous refactoring, okay. pair programming, and so on. And you have a suite of uh, practices that are cohesive that kind of make it possible to kind of ship good quality software. So we've spoken about um, the values of build quality in and the, and the result in terms of actually uh, creating better value for our customers. But there's something more to this. 
So um, what we have seen is that apart from the quality of the product, we have also start, started seeing um, the behavioral changes within the team. Uh, that is, they, uh, for example, I'll, I'll, I'll try to explain with an example. When we started off with the development, uh, the team used to check with uh, the customer for each and, each and every small changes that, that, that happens for the priority or for the plan. Later on, uh, when we started shipping work, working software, uh, customers started uh, asking us for the opinion, uh, uh, ask, ask, started asking the team for the opinions. And then later on, team started deciding their day-to-day uh, -day work rather than checking with the customer. And then they, they will go to the customer or, or discuss with him when, when they think it is appropriate. So what we are seeing is that they, they became more, they started sensing more autonomy, and then they started feeling the freedom of uh, that that any team uh, would love to have uh, when we when they are working with the customer. So, so the XP actually allowed them to be uh, become more autonomy. Uh, that that is what we have started seeing, and because of that, these kind of values that XP brings in, we started uh, we started continuing with the XP practices for every product that we developed after that. So. Now you might be wondering why we are talking about extreme programming in a continuous delivery talk. Uh, so we spoke about the water scrum form model, and if any any team who are there in the in the water scrum form model, if they want to reach continuous delivery, then the first step that they should be taking is start uh, start practicing XP practices, and that is the first step to, towards continuous delivery. In in our opinion, continuous delivery is a superset of extreme programming practices. So Great. now coming back to the story, we sp spoke about the quality and the team uh, motivation. Um, uh, so things were great. Uh, we had a great product and then which, which high quality. And then the day came uh, when it has to go to the market. We had a big launch party when it uh, opened to the public. But uh, what happened was even after a month, uh, there were only few users uh, in the system. And we, started, we keep, kept on waiting. And if, even after a few more months, there was no change in the result. And then um, the, uh, the the customer had some funding issues, and uh, also um, they were he was not getting enough traction to the product. So he went he decided to move into hibernation. And we are even after three years, we are still waiting for him to come back. So even after we delivered a high quality product, the reality of that the product didn't become a success. That had a bad impact on the on the team, and that is the next thing that we would like to fix. So we are a consulting company, right? So we didn't own this product. But in spite of that, you know, the disappointment in the team was quite um, evident. Let's move on to the next story and talk a little bit more about this. Um, actually, autonomy is uh, great for bringing in short-term uh, happiness into the team. That's something that we've seen. Uh, but to create long-term uh, motivation, uh, you, need something, you need to add something else to the picture. Can anybody uh, think of what that might be? So what we need is uh, we need to provide a method or, or an environment that actually allows the uh, team to connect with the bigger picture so that they can actually feel that they're part of something uh, quite important, something that matters. And uh, I'll explain this as part of our next story. So this is uh, a customer that we worked uh, uh, with uh, quite recently. Um, and the original vision was to basically have um, a network of uh, tablet devices installed across multiple cities. and um, the, uh, and these would be remotely controlled from a central location using uh, web services. Um, even though the original plan was to kind of you know, go ahead and build this entire thing, the, the customer chose to go ahead and build the smallest piece possible that would allow them to test the tablet uh, with real users first. And as you might uh, expect, uh, we found quite a few issues very early on. Let's give you, I'll give you an example. So, the USB power cable that actually came with the device uh, wasn't actually long enough uh, for the um, uh, length, uh, for the distance between the tablet, uh, where the tablet was installed, and the power source. So uh, a, a new set of uh, longer cables was uh, ordered. And um, when those uh, were installed, uh, things seemed to work out well. Problem solved, right? Well, not exactly. After uh, about a day of usage, uh, it was quite apparent that the uh, battery level of the device had actually come down by about 50%. Now, um, it turned out that the length of the cable, the length of the cable was the reason for uh, the voltage drop across the, uh, uh, the voltage drop, which in turn uh, resulted in the lower battery levels. Simple problem to solve, we asked our end users to go ahead and switch off the uh, tablets in the nights, and 
uh, and then uh, added a high, a high priority uh, item to our backlog, uh, which would automatically um, switch off these devices in the night uh, from our remote control system. We also discovered a few usability issues, which we fixed by tweaking the uh, user interface. Now, none of these uh, problems would have been uh, discovered if not uh, for the desire that our, that our uh, customer had to go ahead and test a very al early alpha version with, uh, with users. Uh, and this, in turn, uh, allowed us to kind of iterate the product uh, quite rapidly very early on, in turn, uh, allowing for a rapid feedback loop with uh, everybody across the company, including the engineering team back in India. So this was invaluable. This really helped to kind of realize the early uh, goals that uh, our customer had, which was to go ahead and um, Im implement uh, or install the tablet across multiple uh, cities. They also uh, got advertisers on board and um, uh, that uh, very early on, that allowed them to kind of test their pricing model as well. Um, all of this is great uh, from the perspective uh, of the customer because you know if, if it was not for the fact that they had uh, good relationships with their end users, it, uh, even getting feedback from the end users would have been uh, difficult. But there was something the engineering team did as well that was quite useful. So, uh, so what, one of the key things that happened over here is that the customer was able to iterate through multiple uh, versions of the application uh, of the product. And um, that, 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 that is something that the customer did great. But how did the uh, engineering practices, uh, uh, th there should be a backing up uh, engineering practices that will allow the customer to do that. So let's look at uh, uh, some of the practices that we did uh, for achieving that. Uh, so one of the key thing in continuous delivery is make your build always ready for deploy deployment. Anytime th when, when someone wants to deploy it, it should, it, should be a, it should be possible by just clicking of a button. So uh, for achieving that, we have to make changes in the, in the entire uh, software delivery process, uh, starting from the estimating and planning. Uh, so we actually reversed our uh, estimating. Uh, instead of asking how long a story is, will, will, will take, instead of that, we started asking, what is the simplest thing that we can do in a couple of days or less, so that we can get a, a quick feedback on. And the next thing that we started was uh, having a real continuous integration system where the entire team checks into the mainline branch and then uh, they work on small chunks so that they can get feedback on whenever they make a changes, changes and make sure that okay it is aligned with the existing system. Nothing is breaking in the existing system. And the third, uh, third, uh, third aspect of it is the build pipeline, which is a key part of uh, continuous delivery. Uh, let's talk a little more about uh, build pipeline. Build pipeline uh, allows us to achieve three things. One is to make sure that the deployment process is a very risk-free and a completely automated activity rather than a mundane, uh, manual, uh, error-prone activity. Next thing is that it allows you to uh, identify the bad builds early on so that you can ignore those uh, by, by not allowing them to move forward on the pipeline. And then the third thing is that uh, it is uh, it is sanity of the build is maintained. The same build, you can make sure that the same build is uh, moved from the testing environment to the staging environment and from the st staging environment to the production. So these are the major practices that uh, I would like to uh, emphasize on in this talk. There are many things that we'll have to do, uh, especially from the uh, automation perspective to achieve uh, continuous delivery. Uh, I'm not going to into the details of those practices. I'll be available over here. Uh, who, who wants to know more about it, uh, come and talk to me. We can explain it. Uh, so, uh, so the thing of, with all these practices, what we achieved was the deployment is more of a business uh, decision rather than an engineering decision. The customer can go and deploy whatever, whatever version of the product that they want by just clicking of a button. And it's as simple as that. So this story compared to the last two stories had a uh, happy end. The customer was happy and uh, the engineering, so let's look at what is the, what is the, uh, what are the feelings of the engineering team. They were, they were also very happy, extremely happy. Not just because uh, they were able to uh, deploy it multiple times, but mainly because of another reason. That is that they were able to connect their day-to-day -day work to the big picture they were able to see the purpose of what, what they are doing. And 
that actually ended up creating a lot of uh, lot of uh, motivation within the team and then they they became very uh, they are they are also able to connect to the end users not only that they are able to connect to the entire ecosystem that is the uh, advertisers the network uh, the network personnel and all the all the all the uh, entities within the entire ecosystem and that made them uh, feeling very proud of what they are doing and then uh, and that that keeps them motivated for uh, motivated for doing a better work on a daily basis so so you spoken about uh, two aspects right? two aspects of uh, continuous delivery already uh, building quality in and keeping the build always deployable and we've spoken about the corresponding motivational aspects with respect to uh, these two as well uh, the third thing that we want to talk about is uh, continuous improvement, and this is actually an integral part of uh, continuous delivery. Um, not only is it required to have continuous improvement to get to continuous delivery, but you need to maintain, to, you need continuous improvement to kind of maintain continuous delivery as well. It's, uh, it's key. Uh, to talk about continuous improvement, uh, I'm uh, going to bring in a, a story from Toyota, because, um, that's, uh, because those, those guys are the legends in the space. So uh, Taichi Ono uh, is known as the father of the Toyota production system. And he was part of Toyota in the 1930s. It was called Toyota uh, back then, uh, spinning mills, not uh, car manufacturing yet. Um, one morning, uh, one of his assistants actually came running up to him and told him that uh, the plans for their newly constructed factory had been stolen. And there was an uh, obvious look of nervousness on the assistant's face. Uh, Taiichi remained unfazed, though. Now, he uh, said, we don't have to do anything about that. You know, let's, just, let's just get back to work. And went, to, went on to explain that uh, it doesn't matter that they've actually stolen our um, plans because of the fact that by the time they actually build a factory based on those plans, we would have refined and improved our current systems so much so that the, the gap between what they would have built by then and, what, and where, would we, where we would have been by then would have been significant enough that you know, we don't really need to worry about the competition anymore. That's the power of continuous improvement, right? Um, from the waterfall uh, days, uh, water scrum fall days, all the way up to the continuous delivery days, you know, we've been taking these baby steps uh, uh, one day at a time uh, to actually get to this. We, in fact, did not even know that you know, we would actually, uh, th that continuous delivery was what we were ta kind of targeting. Um, we were not even aware of the fact uh, like four, 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 five years ago. Um, but uh, the point I'm trying to make is that folks actually come into work these days uh, to, when, when they build uh, delightful products, they're doing that because you know, they see their work as a way to express themselves. And when you see your work as a way to express yourself, you see it as a craft. And if it's a craft, uh, if it's craft and not a job, then uh, the natural um, uh, tendency is to kind of keep honing it, right? You keep improving it. And it's a journey towards uh, mastery, which is uh, the uh, third bit of the uh, uh, autonomy mastery uh, purpose circles. And um, as uh, Ken Beck says, uh, perfect uh, is not a noun, uh, it's a verb. So the question, uh, if, if at all the question arises as to when does uh, the process of actually honing stop, it never stops, right? It's a continuous journey. So you want to summarize? Uh, yeah, so let's uh, summarize uh, the, mo uh, the motivational aspect. Uh, so we spoke about autonomy, mastery, and purpose. And uh, these are the three pieces of, uh, of Mo uh, the motivation and what you see on the middle uh, the uh, intersection of all these three is called the engagement uh, that is a, a motivated team uh, will have a highly engaged team they are more outcome focused and they keep on honing their craft and then they love their craft and then uh, they know why they are doing and they will always try to connect on, uh, on, a, on a day to day basis why they are doing something and how, how much of impact that they are doing will have on the, uh, on the actual uh, on the end users. So uh, the main difference between this team and the, and the water scrum fall is that this, this team is more outcome based, uh, out, outcome focused rather. That, that is, they focus more on the impact of the software that they are building on, on the end, end users or on the customer's business rather than the output, that is the stories or the velocity or whatever it is. And, um, and then, uh, uh, yeah, so this is our uh, team picture back in Bangalore. Uh, and uh, we, we, we think the smiles on their faces uh, shows of the, in, uh, the level of engagement that they have on their work. And um, so, 
uh, let's move on to the culture bit. We have been talking about uh, continuous delivery and and practices and the motivation within the team. But where does culture come into all these things? So uh, culture, as you all 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 know, is is a shared values and principle among the team. And then uh, so let's take up uh, two two values that we uh, believe in. That is uh, a delighted customer and software craftsmanship. That's the values that we believe in, truly believe in. But how do you identify which practices will help you to achieve or gain these values? So to the answer to that is that take, take those practices which passes this motivation 3.0 test. That is those practices which will allow the team to be autonomous, which will give them room for improving their skills, honing their craft, and which will help them to connect their day-to-day -day work to the uh, uh, to the big picture, then those practices you should continue on, and that will align uh, to your values. And and we as we have seen, continuous delivery helps you to do that. Continuous delivery helps you to become uh, continually improve your practices, and then uh, it it is purpose oriented because uh, you know why you are doing certain things. It gives you feedback, and then it makes the team more aut uh, autonomous. So. So practice continuous delivery, and you will have a great culture. Right. Um, looks like we have uh, time uh, for some uh, neuroscience. So if um, all of the stuff that we've spoken about with respect to uh, motivation isn't um, convincing enough for you to kind of take the plunge into uh, continuous delivery, then perhaps uh, some uh, brain science uh, is going to do the trick for you. Uh, we're going to talk about two parts uh, of the brain. Uh, the first bit uh, is about the, uh, the prefrontal cortex, uh, the stuff in the front, the front part of your brain. And there's something called the limbic system, which is uh, 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 something that's uh, on the inner side. The, uh, pre let's talk about the prefrontal cortex. So when you're um, driving uh, to work every day, you'll probably, be, you'll probably be able to change your radio station without uh, much trouble. But try doing that uh, when you're in a foreign country on the opposite side of the road. And you know what I'm talking about. It's, you need to kind of consciously think about it. Same thing with respect to setting up, setting goals, uh, writing code, analysis, stuff that you do on a day-to-day -day basis you know, at work. Uh, for all of these things, you need uh, the prefrontal cortex. Let's move on to the limbic system. Uh, limbic system is actually uh, responsible for uh, your, your emotions, uh, positive and negative emotions. Um, and it's also responsible for uh, accurately telling you whether there's a threat or a reward in your environment. Uh, another important or interesting thing about uh, the limbic system is that it, you actually have uh, that, it, that it actually has uh, a higher uh, level of affinity towards um, the negative emotions. So you may have heard uh, the saying that you uh, walk towards uh, rewards, uh, but you actually run away from threats, right? And that's actually because of the way the uh, brain functions. Um, so you have if the brain is kind of wired to kind of keep pulling you down with negativity uh, every day then how are you going to go ahead and maintain positivity in the workforce? And uh, this is um, uh, where the, the seesaw effect uh, actually comes into uh, uh, usefulness. Um, it turns out that your um, limbic system cannot uh, function if your prefrontal cortex is, cortex is functioning and vice versa. It's just one of those quirks of the brain wherein uh, either your uh, logical reasoning part of your brain is working or your emotional part of your brain is working, not both of them. So it kind of pays to create an environment where uh, your workforce is always kind of engaged uh, in creative activity, because that kind of pulls them away from uh, emotional uh, depressing circumstances. There's one more thing uh, about the brain, uh, about the prefrontal cortex, rather. And uh, it's actually called the Goldilocks of the brain, uh, because it needs a certain uh, level of uh, stress uh, to actually function well. So stress is not necessarily a bad thing by itself. It's, it, gets, uh, it, it gets bad when it's, uh, it's actually too much. So if you're not able to think creatively when uh, you've just gotten out of bed or uh, when you've just come back from work, when you're tired, that's because of the fact that uh, your, uh, uh, it, it's not the right conditions for your prefrontal cortex to function well. And it pays to create, uh, uh, at the workplace, it kind of pays to create an environment where your folks are, um, are uh, doing work that actually keeps them in the middle part of the uh, inverted U, right? And that's the best part, that's the best way to kind of create, get those creative juices flowing. Uh, Lena will talk about how a continuous delivery is actually linked to all these things. So continuous, uh, like, like we mentioned, uh, like we were talking about, continuous delivery is always about 
making sure that you have a build ready at any point of time. So you need frequent pushes, and that gives a sense of urgency uh, to the team, and that makes sure that uh, they are always on the uh, uh, on the right stress level, the inverted U, and because of that and then there is no fear for the team as they are doing in small steps there is no fear for the team okay will something break that question never arises so that that keeps the limbic system away and make sure that the pfc is always active and because of that you create a highly uh, you 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 tend to create a high creative uh, environment rather than a stressful environment so uh, if you are not convinced with the motivation continuous delivery helps you is tuned to uh, work, uh, work well with the how the brain works so this is one more way to go to uh, to start using you know, doing continuous delivery and so we have spoken about many things now uh, coming back to the th thesis again uh, we strongly believe that okay practice continuous delivery and end up with a great culture but the question arises where will you get started uh, uh, a journey towards uh, something like continuous delivery takes a lot of uh, persistence and will power and we need uh, evangelists for doing that and the best way to get evangelists or to make people think about this this is that by asking these two these two questions that is why must your business exist and if your business doesn't exist who will miss it and if you get an answer for that then you will be able to connect the uh, circles the uh, then then the purpose part will will get answered why why you why you are why why are you doing what you are doing and then that will help you to the the team to be more uh, autonomous and they will have to improve on a daily basis if they if they want to reach the goal that they want to be so so we're going to leave you with a quote from um, Jesse Robbins uh, Jesse is um, one of the co-founders of um, Opscode the guys behind Uh, chef the the popular configuration management tool um and he is uh, also uh, a part time firefighter uh, a true achiever a uh, super achiever in his own right uh, don't fight stupid uh, make more awesome um thank you very much uh, these are four books that we have been using um, uh, on our journey i think you might find it uh, useful as well uh, you can find our contacts uh, on the slide as well so uh, be ready for questions if you have them thank you yes